I'm Mike Griffiths, I'm the Administrative Director at the Traverse here. I've been doing this role about eight years. It's a combination job really, it's a general manager role in the building and it's a producer role, producing the work that we create here. The first job out of drama school that I had was as a result of a, uh, a project we did with the Traverse Theatre and um, as a result of that I got offered a job that incorporated two roles within the, the technical team. By day I was an assistant carpenter helping out in the workshop to build the sets for the next show and in the evening I operated the lights and sound for, um, for the show as a, the assistant electrician. The way that I was taught was I was taught to build stage scenery and the, the techniques that go with stage scenery. I wasn't taught to be a carpenter and if I'd been taught to be a carpenter, I could have made furniture, I could have made a number of different things, but I wasn't taught that way. I was, to I was taught enough to get me by in a, in a theatre environment. Exactly the same with my electrician's um, training. I was taught how to rig and work with lights, you know, theatre lights. I wasn't taught about electricity or installing it or looking after it to, to a, you know, a technically competent, certificated uh, level. Um, and I think that's still the case at the moment. A lot of the, the training that people get is really about uh, making, doing and then somebody checking them off. And I think a lot of people who are doing the checking off are also not qualified. So my big bugbear has been trying to get courses through that would give people a, 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 some kind of qualification that was not only uh, recognised in the theatre, but recognised outside of the theatre. So a number of the electricians here, when I was a production manager, did a city and guilds, um, ele electricians course so and they're able now with that to, to do their work the, the work that they love in the theatre or in events and also go and rewire somebody's house and I thought that that for me was a really really good way of making sure that people could continue to stay in work even if they couldn't always be in theatre work and what we've seen is a large number of people when they get to a certain level they can't afford to be in theatre and they can't afford the freelance life so they have to go and do something else. The best bit of advice I got at drama school, and I got a lot of good advice, but the best one was if you're down to your last 50p, and it, you know, it takes you back a little bit to, to say 50p, but um, go out and have a coffee with somebody because you might get a job that way. And I have to say on many, many occasions, I got to Friday night not knowing that I had any work the following week, went for a drink with somebody in the, bu in the pub, and in the pub somebody said, what are you doing next week? And I managed to kind of get some more work out of that. And in the initial stages, that was really useful. I think as I got more experienced, I was able to book work um, in advance. And by the time I finished my freelance job, I had about six months of work planned for, for, for myself. So I would again always say, rather than sit at home with your last fiver, is um, you know, phone a, a friend who might be in work and see if there are other people who you, know, you, might, get a really, you might get lucky and you might get an opportunity you know, to get through the next week or the next month with a role that, that covers you until another more suitable job comes out.